Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fitlosophy, as presented by Better University, with your hosts, Scotty, Dan, Victoria, and Danielle. Do us a favor, guys. If you like what you see, if you like the show, please hit that subscribe, like button. Help us get in front of more eyes. But without wasting any more time, the last couple episodes, we've spent a lot of time discussing posture, the core, and how those two things kind of interrelate for us throughout our day-to-day -day lives. So what we figured we'd do today is we would kind of bridge the gap, so to speak. We'll take all the theory, all the information that we've discussed, and put it into more of a hands-on type demonstration for you to help you start getting better at controlling your core muscles and your own postures today. So, without further to do, if we look right here, we have our diagram that we had before in uh, one of our previous episodes. We've got the transverse abdomen and the external obliques and the rectus abdominis. Now, these are probably the most important muscles for what we consider the block or the blocking technique. This is when we create air pressure by bracing our abdominal muscles, our core muscles, out and in simultaneously to create a block. This is the safe posture and position for doing heavy squats, deadlifting, and really any kind of motion you're going to be moving or doing with your torso to keep your spine nice and safe. So I want you to picture your TVA, your transverse abdomen, as a balloon that is inside of your body. And you are able to inflate and push this balloon out, but you're also able to draw this balloon in to a very tight center of gravity. Now, outside of the TVA, you have the obliques and the abdominal muscles that are also able to press in on this TVA. So when we create our brace, or when we're creating a brace or a block, we're pushing the TVA out. We're using the diaphragm to create air pressure. We're taking the pelvic floor and lifting up, and we're making this nice, tight little box of pressure. So our obliques and our abs at that point then wrap around that box we've created and really tighten it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little demonstration with our hands to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about. So if you can picture my hands as the TVA expanding and pushing out, Victoria is going to represent the external obliques and the abdominal muscles. So as the TVA starts to push out to create that pressure, the obliques and the abdomen pull in to create that extra tight, squeezing feeling. Thank you. So a lot of times when we think of tightening up or squeezing the core, a lot of people will instantly activate the abdominal muscles and just the abdominal muscles. So what ends up happening is if you can picture uh, a two liter bottle without the cap on, and you're just gonna take your thumbs and you're gonna drive your thumbs into that two liter bottle. That's your abdominal muscles pushing in against an unbraced TVA. Now if instead you put air into that bottle, screw the cap on, and then try to squeeze with your thumbs and even with your hands, as if you were representing the external obliques and the abdominals, that isn't going to go anywhere. It's the same concept, it's the same principle. We create air pressure, we push those internal muscles out, and we pull in on them at the same time. So uh, moving on from there, this is where we're going to have to have the first edit. edit. <laughs> I can't freaking remember where we're going to move on from there. Okay. Excuse me. Back to you. Ah, Opposite. yes. Thank you. Moving on from there, the next thing we're going to talk about is something Scotty has a lot of experience with, and he's going to help us demonstrate this. So one of the things we can utilize as a technique to help us get more in touch and aware of the TVA and the abdominal muscles as a whole is known as the vacuum pose, something that's used quite a bit in bodybuilding and stage presence and performance. You want to talk about that for a little bit? Absolutely. Thanks, Dan. So, the vacuum pose when used in bodybuilding is when a bodybuilder on stage is pulling the abdominal wall inward and upward to try to really tighten the midsection in as much as possible and even wrap the abdominal muscles almost in under the ribs. Yeah. The more 
impressively they can do so. Now, as a disclaimer, I am not the best vacuum pose uh, demonstration. I'm sure I have other people who can do better, but we'll have them on the show. Comment if you're great at it, we'll have you on. And, uh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> and anyway, uh, it creates a really tight midsection look. It makes the midsection tiny as opposed to the really wide, broad lat muscles and uh, deltoids, which create the sought after V taper that you see on a bodybuilder. So, so very uh, physically appealing or aesthetically pleasing, if you will, but there's a lot of function involved with that as well. Being able to use your TVA in that way, many people don't even realize they can draw it in like that. So what we're gonna do is, since uh, Scotty here has experience with it, and as well has the lowest body fat percent out of any of us, <laughs> that's going to give you a much better visual representation of exactly what it is we're talking about. So, if you would please, let's come front and center. We're going to show you what an actual vacuum looks like with the TVA drawing up and in. So this would be normal, abdominal, non-pressure, straight wall, when you vacuum, now the other cool thing about that, by practicing vacuuming, you actually massage your internal organs and you help strengthen that muscle's ability to pull in and press out. Ooh. <laughs> like, well, that must take okay. a lot of yeah. concentration. <laughs> ah. So when you do so, if you're not used to doing it too often, <laughs> sometimes you're external obliques will cramp on you a little yes. bit. <laughs> Actually, I can tell you, uh, when I do my vacuum uh, work, uh, keep in mind, everybody, I don't do bodybuilding. I don't do stage presence. I include vacuuming as part of my core training, as part of developing a uh, well-rounded and fully functional abdominal section and the ability to use it. On so few people and so few things that we ever do are using the TVA in that way. So to be able to train it with a vacuum technique, it's, it's really something that you're not gonna get out of any other exercise. And I will tell you, the one big benefit that I noticed that really helped or worked for me, and I see this with my clients too, is it creates more awareness. And if there's one theme that we really try to push more and more on this show and in our practice in general, being more aware of your muscles, of your body in space, will allow you to use them more effectively and efficiently. Um, something like this, if you've never done it before, may actually increase your ability to squat weight. Uh, may, let me rephrase that. It will increase your ability to squat weight. If you have a stronger foundation, you can build a larger house. Absolutely. That and that foundation is your core, as we've been talking about, pushing in and out against each other and creating that strength. Got it. Thank you very much for that demonstration. So one of the next things, before we get into some of our other hands-on things, is I want to actually look a little bit towards you guys. Um, Victoria, we've been doing a lot of new stuff for our core training. Yes. Uh, stability, keeping the hips all kind of nice and framed out. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit on just one of the things that we recently discovered as far as uh, your hamstring was concerned and how your yes. hips were not able to square up? Yeah, so you mean like the numbness thing? Yes. Yeah, so what? I'll ask you when I get there. <laughs> so um, when I pick up heavy things, specifically a puppy, <laughs> um, and like just for a long time, I don't know what it is, but um, I lose kind of the feeling in my legs as I'm walking, and I just feel like I'm not gonna be able to like make that next step and I'm just gonna collapse. But every time I just keep going through it because I kind of know what that feeling is. And what'd you discover? So we discovered that in Victoria's leg, Specifically, the right leg, the hamstring muscle, had a very locked up portion of it that anytime she would go into a bend on that leg, everything would turn up, out, and away. So you, you look at that and you're like, oh, you know, I, I don't really understand how that's necessarily a big deal. But what ends up happening is because that can't all move freely, there's actually vascularity in there that when the leg's active is now being choked off yeah. from delivering blood up and down her leg, which is why she was starting to feel numbness issues when having that active for long periods of time. Because anytime you're picking up and holding something, those hip muscles, those leg muscles, they are going to be in an active state. 
So now that we have addressed that, you had a week to kind of start yeah. working on some of those techniques that we went over. Yeah. How's the numbness been? Yeah, so um, just to kind of explain it a little bit more, when the feeling would come back, it was kind of like a rush. And I would have never imagined that it was going to be like a vascular thing at all. I thought it was some kind of nerve thing. Um, and I'm glad that it's not. So, um, but now I was packing today um, and I lifted some heavy boxes and that feeling was probably like 20%. Yeah, not weeks. scary at Probably all. I, did not, I, I didn't even think I was gonna like fall or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so, you. <laughs> so that's uh, that's just a really good prime example for you guys out there to know that if something doesn't feel right, if something's off. You really should address it sooner rather than later. Don't wait until it becomes a problem. Because as Victoria said, she was still able to move around. There weren't any issues. It didn't cause her to collapse. But if we didn't address it, if we didn't take care of it, that would start to create a compounded issue down the road. And uh, especially as far as nerves and vascularity is concerned, that's just not a game you want to play. With. Yeah, and it's been like a few years that that's been happening, and just having like that one week has been such a huge difference. Just knowing what it is and being conscious of correcting it. Yeah, nice. Yeah. One of the things that I see some of the time sounds kind of similar is, uh, especially when clients have had a past injury, they'll be using certain muscle groups less. Mm. And what a lot of times we forget is our muscles absolutely work to move our skeletal system to you know, create movement. But another thing that a contracted muscle does is it squeezes the blood within that muscle and it squeezes the vascular system within that muscle to drive the blood through the body. So your muscles actually work almost like second, third, fourth, and down the chain extra hearts all throughout you pumping your blood extra little pumps all through so that's a good uh, that's a good explanation for like why <laughs> post op danielle was given a piece of equipment to yeah. increase circulation yes. in her legs yep. now obviously she's even though she has her shoulder in a sling she's still very active still moving around quite a bit mm -hmm. so not something necessarily she would have to be concerned with but standard protocol most people post up they're probably not going to move around a lot because well it, it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. so they absolutely would need some kind of device to help increase circulation so they don't create any issues but so we don't get too far off topic although you know we're, we're famous for getting off topic <laughs> always good topics mind you um, we do have a couple other visual demonstrations that we do want to go over with you guys uh, for how again you can start today to improve your awareness of your core structures and to utilize them in your everyday life. So the first one, and uh, I believe actually everybody's gonna, gonna join me for this one, right. is called the seated straddle bracing exercise. So that's a mouthful. All you really need to know is that you're in a seated position, straddle position, and you're going to be going through bracing activities. So I'm actually gonna sit up here and off to the side, so that way you guys get a little bit of a uh, a couple different angles of kind of what's going on here. So, all right, now that we're all down on the floor, <laughs> um, beginner tip for everybody. If you find that you don't have the hamstring mobility, and when you sit in a position like this, you're very lean back, you know, the abdominal muscles aren't super engaged, you can use a wall and put your back against it to help almost force you more into that upright position. Because I will tell you, to get into what we consider an L-sit pose, you do have to have quite a bit of hamstring uh, mobility and core strength, especially in your TVA and that pelvic floor. So we start in that straddle position and we want to bring ourselves up to a good upright position. First, we begin by taking a few deep breaths, really pushing that TVA out. So you should start to notice after you take two, three, four breaths, you'll start to feel the lower part of the TVA start to get a lot more active. And once you start to feel that, you know you're in the right zone to start doing the rest of the work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our torso, just our torso towards one of our feet. We're going to again, take a nice deep inhale. And after we've taken a nice deep inhale, really push that TVA out. We're going to start to lean even further forward as far as we can. Now, the idea is we want to lean forward at the torso. We don't want to start rounding our thoracic cavity, all right? 
that's just going to kind of make it a lot easier. And anytime you're making something easier, you're probably missing out on a lot of the benefit. So once we've done one leg, we then move to the other. Same thing, deep breath, lean towards that leg, get that activation, squeeze. And then last but not least, we do one right through the middle. So the good news is, this isn't something you have to hold for a super long time. You just need to uh, feel it, really. Exercises like this, this is something simple that I use in my warm-ups. Um, when I'm getting my core kind of fired up to uh, activate for squats, deadlifts, ooh, this should be fun. <laughs> Bam! Look at that! He's By okay. the way, good measure of, uh, of physical health is, can you stand up yeah. without yeah. using your hands? Yes. So, uh, if you're at home right now and you want to test your physical fitness levels, see if you can stand up off the, from a sitting position without using your hands. Not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> so, for this next one, um, unfortunately I am going to ask Scotty and Danielle not to participate with this one, just because uh, the position it puts the body in won't be good for his ankle and definitely won't be good for her shoulder. But, Victoria on the other hand, you can absolutely join me for this one. And uh, what we'll do again is we'll kind of stagger ourselves off so you can see this from a side view and you can see this from a front view too. So if you've ever done a yoga class or if you've ever utilized certain yoga poses in your own training or you're just your day-to-day -day life, what we're about to do is going to look very familiar to you. We're going to be utilizing the cat pose and the cow pose, but dynamically. We're going to be moving back and forth through both of them while doing these deep breathing exercises and focusing on trying to get the core to activate. Now, if you're a beginner, you only need to worry about the cat, the cow, and the breathing exercises, and you can even put your feet against a wall to kind of help frame everything out. For those of you who are a little bit more advanced and you want to get better or deeper activation in the core, you can do this same exercise from what's called bear pose. So bear pose, very simply put, is from the quadruped position, which we use for cat and cow, to just simply elevate your knees lightly off the ground. So to give you a quick example of that, simple quadruped position, four points of contact with the ground, knees under the hips, hands under the shoulders, push the body through, so that way your shoulders are pushed all the way through and not resting up in your neck or into your back. So this is quadruped position. This is bear position. So as you can see, there's just a little bit of space between my knees and the floor. So from quadruped position to do cow, we push our TBA down towards the ground. A lot of people try to flex into their lower back when they're doing the cow position. You are trying to create bend in your uh, lumbar spine, but that's not where the emphasis is. The emphasis is pushing the TBA down towards the floor while drawing the chest up. Because again, we're not trying to pinch anything in our spine. We're not trying to take our spine and wrench it in half. We're trying to improve mobility and core tension at the same time. So by pushing into cow, we then take our deep breaths again, pushing the TBA as far as we can and squeezing it with those abdominal muscles. Exhale. We'll do a few deep breaths like that from cow position. And then we'll move ourselves into cat position where we draw the TBA up and into our body and our pelvic muscles towards our rib cage. Again, deep breaths. Now, once you've got those down, you can start to move dynamically between the two, taking a deep breath while in cow, holding it while moving to cat and exhaling as you move back to cat. And you can do those the opposite way as well. From cat position, so the idea here is we're creating that tension and we're causing movement while holding that tension. It's going to help you feel the abdominal muscles, the core muscles, everything a lot more while you're in motion. Again, building that awareness 
because what's going to help all of that translate to your big movements, your squats, your deadlifts, your day-to-day -day life. So, uh, Victoria, if you will, yeah. come on down. Right. We're gonna do a series of these, all right? So these are not my best thing. But, <laughs> but you're learning, right? As part of our program, I'll I've got to do this. Way. Yes. <laughs> because... <laughs> all right. So, dynamically speaking, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through cat and cow with a couple deep breaths. I'm gonna do this from bear position to show you just how uh, the bear pose can make things a little bit more intense. And what you're gonna notice is when I do these in bear position, I'm not going to be moving as far as I was while holding quadruped. And other tip number two, if you put a yoga block between your knees, it will help you uh, keep everything a little bit tighter. Where that yoga block? <laughs> Ooh, <whoa>. Okay. <laughs> so we get to quadruped position, we squeeze the yoga block. You're welcome to push up into bear if you so choose, but you don't have to. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start from the neutral position. We're gonna move up into cat, take a deep breath, move to cow. And now we're gonna do the opposite. Deep breath in cow, then move to cat. Now, if you want to kick this up a notch, you can start to play with the positioning of your hands and stagger one way or the other. Now, what would that do? So, by lifting everything a little bit further away from you, you're going to notice you're going to get a lot more activation from your oblique while you're moving through cat and cat. Conversely, with everything a little bit closer, you're going to get a little bit more activation from your diaphragm. Be careful you don't squeeze that too hard. If you've ever gotten a diaphragm cramp, they are not fun. <laughs> oh, no. um, you can also move the hands out wide to really just play around with how you can feel everything. Because again, at the end of the day, awareness is what's going to really help you out in the long run. So that's all that we've got for uh, demonstrations on that front. Uh, Scotty, was there something that uh, you wanted to demo for everybody? Or at least talk about? Sure. So, uh, yeah, this is more. Throw yourself in. Throw yourself in. I'll stop right <laughs> So, as you can see, I uh, am currently rocking an awesome boot. Uh, they have this awesome style, but they only had one in stock, so I'm waiting for the other one. But I'm wearing <laughs> I was just about to say, it must be so funny just putting one shoe on every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I just thought about this. <laughs> yeah. I have single shoes of several different pairs strewn about <laughs> right? because normally they stay together, but now they're just everywhere. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> very true. I uh, So I have a slight sprain in my ankle from uh, some Muay Thai training I was doing. And uh, one of the things that I'm finding is when I'm walking around and training clients all day here at All Access Fitness Academy in Shrewsbury, uh, <laughs> I'm constantly needing to pick weight up and stay on one leg the whole time. So my core is being used in all different ways from a single leg position nonstop. Mm. The plus side of this is I've gotten very comfortable in my single leg position just even over the past oh, man. Your pistol days. Squat, <laughs> your pistol squats are gonna be on um, point. Oh, yeah. They're gonna be quite good. <laughs> Not gonna demonstrate right now. <laughs> um, one of the things that has really played a lot into this uh, to keep myself from creating the imbalances that it would create otherwise is that I've been doing a lot more core work, working on rotational work, uh, working on some hip mobility, because right now I'm not going to be doing that any favors, putting all my strain on one leg and leaning to one side with a crutch where I have it. So anyway, trying to work against that, just as we were talking about in previous episodes, when we have anything that's affecting our posture, affecting our core throughout the day, we want to make sure that we're balancing against that with the work that we do in the gym. Very well said. Okay. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. And I love that you've got, you know, the uh, the very first-hand experience to talk from. So, you know, it's not just some <laughs> trainer up here. What experience? Okay. <laughs> it's not just some trainer up here speaking at you, you know, from, from a place of education. It's another human being speaking to you on the same level. This is what I'm having to deal with, and it ties directly in to everything that we've already been saying. 
And I'm sure Danielle finds herself in a lot of that same oh, situation yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, because I can't even use this arm, it's I'm using all my bags on this side too, so I have the same thing with the core, but I can't really do too much as far as training with my core, um, but I'm definitely being more aware of the way I'm holding my posture and everything, but it's temporary. It's so, <laughs> so I keep telling myself. <laughs> to, uh, to wrap up today, we're just gonna kind of highlight the big key points. Uh, so core awareness, core activation, utilizing drills to improve your awareness and your activation. We have vacuum posing, massaging of the internal organs. Uh, I will tell you from experience having done it and also coaching and teaching people to do it, it isn't necessarily one of those things that you get immediately the first time you try. Ooh, do you have techniques and tricks that I don't know about? Uh, that's what I was going to mention. Uh, we didn't really touch too much on how to train it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so okay. I was just going to jump in and say, what I like to have my clients uh, generally do, especially for bodybuilding training, <clears throat> where we're going to be using it in posing, I have them practice only about 30 seconds at a time, and we work up to that. We go 10 seconds at first, pull in and hold. We want to have short, short breaths, and then release, relax, stretch out a little bit. You'll start to feel some cramping sometimes in your other abdominal muscles because you're not used to this type of contraction. So just make sure that you're staying loose enough, mobile enough. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just uh, 10 seconds, three to six times. We can increase that from 10 seconds up to about 30 seconds at a time, and then further if we need. Uh, but that, we really only have to do that a few times a week, generally. Uh, that's what I have my clients focus on. On stage, yeah. how long do you have to hold it for? <laughs> so the vacuum is not actually a required pose. It's, okay. it's a portion of your, generally your front poses or your side poses. Uh, you know, your front mm -hmm. double biceps is one of the more common when you have both arms up, up and up on the side. So yeah, you pull your vacuum pose in on that one, you have a great V taper. Same goes for a front relaxed pose, uh, quarter turns. Relaxed. Yeah, <laughs> right. <Not> relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got a real quick side, real quick aside. One of the worst things to see, so anyone listening who's thinking about competing, when you go on stage and they say the word front relax or relax, it doesn't mean relax. <laughs> so come back to your relaxed pose. It's <laughs> quick as that. Uh, but anyway, on stage, you're not actually required to hold a vacuum mm -hmm. um, technically in any pose. You could just do a, a uh, abdominal flex, which would be kind of like walking in your normal mm -hmm. uh, workout routine, just showing your, uh, your abdominal muscles instead. Uh, but if you are doing these poses, Generally, they're gonna hold you in a specific pose somewhere from five to 15 seconds tops. Oh, okay. But if they're transitioning you from pose to pose mm -hmm. facing the front, you may be doing anywhere from you know three to 10 front poses in a row. Wow. So generally, you don't wanna hold a vacuum every pose every time. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I like we don't have to touch on this. We don't usually go that yeah. way. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's a good question. There, there are a lot of crossovers between all the different sports and disciplines mm -hmm. that do have very real applications to general population. Well, and especially like we were talking about connecting with these muscles, there's no better way than when you are. Oh, and practice in a mirror, by the way. I didn't yes. That. Mm -hmm. Look in the mirror. Start at home in your bathroom, not in public. <laughs> Shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Not a thing to practice in the middle of McDonald's. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but it's it's funny you say that. Uh, the the tips that I do give to my clients when we first start learning is I say practice at home in the bathroom mirror. You know, short durations. I do also suggest that exhale half of your breath before drawing in because it's a little bit easier when you've got less air in your lungs to really pull up and in than it is to try and pull up and in when you've already got yeah. lungs full of air. <laughs> but true. don't exhale all of it, because then you'll get really lightheaded after about 10 seconds of holding that. So <laughs> oh, it is something you will have to practice on your own and just kind of play around with it to feel more comfortable. Um, similar to anybody who's ever actually taught themselves to whistle, you don't know how to do it when you first start. You just kind of yeah. get it one day while you're playing around with it. All right. Oh, so. Moving on from the, uh, the vacuum, the vacuuming, uh, the other thing that we talked about were the straddle pose, bracing positions, pushing out in that TVA and trying to bring your torso into a bend, opening up through the hips. 
utilizing a wall if you don't have that flexibility to keep you in that upright position. Um, other than that, no, you're okay. sitting back against the wall, right? Yes. <clears throat> Getting that back nice and flat. Your knees may have to bend a little bit depending on your flexibility, but ideally you're trying to get that to the point where everything's nice and down. So what happens is when you use the wall, you can kind of relax against it. You don't have to hold those core muscles quite as tight. You don't have to hold the hip flexors quite as tight. And then when you're ready, take that deep breath in, get that brace, tighten up the legs, and then pull through your hips with your torso. Again, not trying to pull the top of the torso through because that's easy. Anybody can bend their T-spine. Well, anybody who has proper T-spine mobility. But the hard part is getting that lower segment, the lumbar, to move forward through your hips. That's the trick. And then last but not least, we talked about the cat-cow pose, breathing exercises, and then utilizing bear position if you want to kick those up a notch. Yoga block between the knees to help keep everything tight and compact. Feet up against the wall if you need a little extra support. Other than that, that's our show for today. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like our content, uh, hit us up with DMs on our social media if you have any questions or comments. We'd be more than happy to uh, chat with you. Have a good night.